shorting mechanisms that are used in the financial industry uh, actually create fictitious uh, you know, uh, assets that are used to devalue the, the real assets. Um, we are probably moving into, maybe in this coming year, um, into a phase in which uh, perhaps uh, institutional money is going to start moving into Bitcoin. Yes. And uh, and as such. And with it comes shorting and fractional reserve banking and a lot of the other things. So I'm, yeah, you, uh, I, I was wondering what your take on that is. Uh, I'll give you two answers. The, the first one is that um, it's a lot harder to devalue the currency that way. Um, and it's a lot less effective to devalue the currency that way. So I'd rather take away the central bank inflation controls, even if I still don't have perfect sound money from the Austrian economics perspective, um, because it's still better. It cannot be inflated as fast or as effectively uh, as you can with other currencies. But at the same time, I'm also thinking that 20 years from now, we're going to have to disrupt Bitcoin. So, if you think ahead of it, eventually Bitcoin will be corrupted and co-opted in some way. And, and we are going to have to boot something else that disrupts Bitcoin, because Bitcoin has become Goldman Sachs coin. Um, I, but, but the point is that in the journey from here to there, we can disrupt Goldman Sachs more than they can disrupt Bitcoin. So, I'll take it. All right. Yes. Um, first of all, thank you so much for coming here. Oh, well, thanks for hosting me. Uh, I, I wanted to actually go back to the previous question we were talking about. Shot 256 is a great article called Life Cycle of the Hash. Yes. And it sort of talks about how these hashes fall. And, like, it takes forever. Um, so I, it takes forever to what? To, 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 for, for hashes to fall. You know, they don't they don't like suddenly fall. You sort of find like you know little cracks in them, and then you know cryptographers start saying like, oh well, you know maybe you can do this, and you, know, you, you can spend like a million dollars and break the hash, and somebody finds a better one. But you don't break the hash. You erode it to the point where you can do it maybe one percent better. Or one percent faster. Very rarely have you seen a hash completely. I, actually, I don't think any hash algorithm has, has been broken. We've just found shortcuts to make it more efficient to calculate. Yeah, sorry, I just to call that yeah that's 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 a very good point. And 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 you know, SHA two fifty six is probably one of the most studied algorithms. Uh, if you look at Satoshi Nakamoto's discussions on the crypto mailing list, you'll see that um, the choices he made, the two the two significant choices he made, SHA two fifty six. And the, the horizon that that has as a cryptographic hash algorithm, as well as ECDSA, but not just ECDSA, the specific elliptic curve he used, which is called SECP256K1. Um, elliptic curves are a complex uh, topic, but one of the things we now know is that the process of creating the elliptic curves was uh, corrupted by the NSA. Uh, within the very same standard that SECP256K1, this curve that's used in Bitcoin was first published. Uh, which is part of a NIST standard that includes 12 different curves. That also included the dual ECRGB uh, random number generator that we now know has a secret backdoor key uh, that the NSA first created to subvert the cryptography standards. And then they paid RSA $10 million to stick it into commercial products, knowing that it was broken. Uh, by the way, don't go to the RSA conference this year. Boycott the shit out of them. Um, they, they betrayed our trust, as did the NSA, and they need to pay for that. But within that standard, there's a bunch of uh, curves. And uh, some of those curves are weird, in that uh, a, a, an elliptic curve works on the um, equation a, uh, y squared equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus, uh, plus c, or something like that. So there are three parameters in there, A, B, and C, which determine the, the characteristics of the curve. Now, you want those parameters to be something predictable. Uh, in cryptography, there are certain sets of numbers that are called nothing up my sleeve numbers. So if you have, say, an algorithm that uses a random num number initialization vector, and you want to persuade people that the no random number you picked is not a special one, that it has a weakness or that has a secret backdoor or something like that, you would use a nothing up my sleeve number. For example, in uh, Blowfish, which was developed by Bruce Schneier, he used the digits of pi. He used a specific sequence of digits of pi. So unless Bruce Schneier created pi, <laughs> we know that he didn't put those digits there for a purpose. And he couldn't quite pick the right, because they're picked on a specific basis. 
the other people will pick a specific part of the Fibonacci sequence or the Napier uh, constant or some very very large uh, number that's well known. Um, you could pick your birthday, and, and people would know that you didn't select that to subvert the system. So within the twelve curves, the constant parameter of the SEC P two fifty six K one Koblitz curve is the number seven. I'm pretty sure the NSA hasn't compromised seven yet. <laughs> They're working on it. So, um, so we can trust that the, the, the Koblitz curve that he picked is probably one of the purer ones, or one of the least likely to have been uh, compromised. But we can change that. One of the things that is happening at the moment in the core protocol is a discussion to allow the, um, the elliptic curve, or generally the digital signature algorithm that's used to verify ownership of transactions, to be user selectable, so that you can essentially have an opcode or parameter that says, this is an old style ECDSA SECP 256K1. Oh, this is a new one. It uses the Apple Curve 15392 curve that Apple uses in all their devices, an elliptic curve developed in Cupertino, or a completely new one. And that would allow you to gradually introduce new encryption primitives within the protocol without breaking backwards compatibility in the blockchain. So we can change that too. As long as it's not broken before we change it. <laughs>